I have worked the graveyard shift at a cemetery for 15 years. From 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., working overnight has its perks, including more tasks due to increased visitors and frequent burials. Night shift employees also receive an extra $2 per hour. During my time there, I've mostly seen teenagers and occasional drunk groups causing trouble. However, one night was different. I arrived early, chatted with the day worker, did the necessary checks, and then patrolled in a golf cart. Not much happens, maybe once a month. The first few hours were uneventful. After driving around and having lunch at the small facility building, I resumed my rounds in the cemetery around 2 a.m. As I reached the far end, I noticed a figure near the fence. The darkness made it difficult to see details, but it was clearly a man standing outside the fence, facing me. Not wanting to confront him unnecessarily, I turned and drove a short loop around the area to see if he would attempt to climb the fence in my absence. However, when I returned after just 30 seconds, he had vanished. I quickly scanned the surroundings to ensure he hadn't entered the premises, and finding no signs of him, I continued with my patrol. Covering the entire yard usually takes about 15 minutes, but sometimes I slow down to pass the time. Eventually, I decided to revisit the spot where I initially spotted the man. Figuring I had nothing better to do, I headed in that direction. Almost immediately, I spotted the man again, this time inside the yard standing on the gravel path. Once more, I drove closer, but the man remained motionless. Leaving the golf cart behind, I cautiously approached the man on foot, estimating him to be around 40 years old. Maintaining a safe distance, I voiced my concern about his presence and the need for him to leave. However, he disregarded me, refusing to acknowledge my presence. A surge of fear coursed through me, prompting me to gently extend my hand to tap his shoulder. In an instant, he sharply turned his head, locking eyes with me. His gaze emanated powerful anger. Withdrawing my hand, I watched as he turned around and walked away. I hurriedly returned to the golf cart, preparing to contact the police and monitoring his departure until he disappeared beyond the fence, continuing on foot. Though relieved, I remained deeply unsettled. Feeling uneasy, I returned to the faculty building and sought refuge in a small security structure. Taking a seat, I tried to calm myself down and regain composure. The fear I felt was unfamiliar, as most encounters in my role were routine and non-threatening. I stayed inside, uncertain of the time, until a loud bang on the door startled me. Jumping out of my seat, I anxiously stared at the door, my heart pounding with fear. Moments later, they banged on the door again, the knocks exhibiting an aggressive demeanor, far from friendly. Trapped without an escape, I seized the desk phone and dialed 9 to 11. Unaware of their intentions or purpose for being there, I wasn't willing to risk uncovering the truth. After what felt like an eternity of persistent banging, I eventually heard their footsteps fade away as they departed. I remained patient waiting for the arrival of the police before daring to open the door. The next day, my manager managed to retrieve the CCTV security footage from the building. What I witnessed on the recording was utterly horrifying. Merely minutes after I had entered the building, the same man I had encountered in the yard approached the door. He stood there silently for nearly 15 minutes before forcefully banging on the door. In his hand, he held an object, Although the footage lacked the clarity to discern its exact nature, it appeared to be a small pipe or bat of some sort. Despite extensive efforts, the man's identity remained unknown. Nevertheless, I continued to work the same job at the graveyard, and I have not encountered him since that incident. I had been working the night shift at the gas station for nearly a year, enduring the long hours and repetitive tasks. One night, as I finished my duties, an old beat-up car with tinted windows pulled up. A sleep-deprived man in his mid-thirties, wearing a black leather jacket, stepped out and headed towards the store's entrance. With a friendly smile, I greeted him and offered my assistance at the gas station. He remained silent, 
casually placing a $20 bill on the counter before proceeding to fuel his car. Despite his seemingly rude demeanor, such encounters were common during late night shifts, when conversations were minimal. I grew concerned as the man at the gas pump took an unusually long time for the small amount of fuel he purchased. When I approached him to offer assistance, he quickly drove away. Back inside the store, an unsettling feeling settled over me as the night progressed. The lack of other customers and the eerie silence outside heightened my unease. Then I heard a noise from the back of the store, like a falling box. Armed with a flashlight, I cautiously investigated the source of the sound. As I rounded the corner, I discovered a disheveled man going through our inventory. He looked unkempt and smelled of alcohol. Frozen in fear, our eyes met before he began approaching me with a fixed gaze. I retreated slowly, raising my hands in defense, but he persisted. With a switchblade in hand, he slurred his words, demanding to know the location of the money. I pointed to the register, but he forcefully pushed me against the counter. As I opened the cash register, the man wandered around the store, specifically targeting the liquor section. He discreetly stashed several pricey bottles into his backpack before returning to the register. I placed all the bills we had, barely exceeding $100, on the counter. Displeased, the man glanced at the money, and then at me, expressing his dissatisfaction. Frustration fueled his actions as he brandished his open blade, waving it menacingly while yelling at me. I feared he would leap over the counter and inflict harm, but unexpectedly, he swiftly snatched the cash and bolted out the door. My heart raced with adrenaline. Looking out the window, I spotted the same beat-up car from earlier. The man swiftly entered, and they sped away. The police arrived a few minutes later, responding to the emergency button I had pressed during the man's liquor perusal. Initially, their assistance was limited, but fortunately, the external surveillance cameras captured the license plate of the car. Four days later, I received the news that both men had been apprehended. It turned out they were homeless individuals who had stolen the car and embarked on a spree of robberies, primarily targeting stores for alcohol and money. I consider myself fortunate to have emerged from the encounter unharmed, as their unpredictable behavior resulted in another worker being hospitalized. However, a couple of weeks later, I decided to quit my job and transition to a daytime position at a different workplace. I work as an overnight receptionist at a local hotel, responsible for managing the front desk. My primary duties include checking in guests, handling phone calls, and monitoring the security cameras. Given that our hotel isn't particularly large or bustling, the job is typically quiet. On this particular night, the hotel had only a few guests, and the majority of rooms were vacant. While at the front desk, I noticed a man approaching the entrance with bloodshot eyes, indicating his intoxication. Despite this, I greeted him and checked him into a room. After he headed towards the elevators, I returned to the front desk, engrossed in my phone. Later, I heard a strange noise from the hallway, resembling an attempted forced entry. I rose from my chair and proceeded to investigate. Turning the corner, I reached the end of the hallway, where I discovered the same individual I had checked in earlier. He was attempting to access one of our maintenance doors. When I offered help, he stared at me with unsettling eyes. Uncertain of his intentions, I decided not to press further, assuming that his altered state may have led him to search for a vending machine or some other item. To avoid agitating him, I retreated to my desk, putting the incident out of my mind. After a period of silence, I heard a loud banging noise emanating from one of the rooms. Curious and somewhat nervous, I ascended to the second floor, where the sound seemed to come from. Despite the quietness, I discovered an open room door at the end of the hallway. I carefully listened for any response but received no answer. With caution, I peered into the room, unable to fully explore as unease settled in. It appeared vacant, and I closed the door, taking note of the room number. 112, the very room assigned to the man I had checked in. Curiously, 
I never witnessed his departure from the building. In a rush, I hurried back to the front desk and thoroughly examined the security cameras, both inside and outside the premises. However, the man was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, the hotel phone rang, interrupting my investigation. I answered the call and listened as a woman described a disturbing encounter with a man knocking on her door late at night. Reassuring her of my immediate help, I hung up the phone, feeling a wave of anxiety wash over me. After investigating the unsettling incidents, I received more reports from guests about late-night door knocking. I quickly contacted the police and positioned myself near the front doors. The police arrived promptly, but the man responsible had escaped by jumping from the second story through a broken window in his room. It remained a mystery how he managed to avoid severe injuries. While the police continued their search, news arrived that the car used for payment in the room had been reported stolen. The intentions and motives of the man remained unclear, leaving us perplexed as to why he had been knocking on guests' doors. I expressed gratitude that none of the guests had opened their doors, as the situation could have escalated to a much more perilous outcome. Thank you for staying with us until now while watching this thrilling horror video. If you want to experience more spine-chilling content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. There's plenty more to come.